Hello and welcome to the channel. And we're back for our second part video today. We've gone over the sorters in a previous video. Now we're actually going to go over rotors. We have three rotor bits here. The first is the standard rotor, second is the advanced rotor, and the last is the rotor part. Now the rotor part is usually not needed unless you accidentally delete part of your rotor. Now there is also a current I guess you could say sort of workaround to attach large ship and station blocks to small craft using the rotor part. But we're actually not going to cover that on this particular video here, since it's basically not really an intended design feature. Uh, the key no things to notice here between the uh, basic rotor and the advanced rotor is that the advanced rotor serves also as a conveyor system. It has a large conveyor connection on both ends, and that allows cargo of any kind to be transported through it. Now, of course, they have the same torque and braking force options as the small rotor, so you don't really see any performance increase over it. You do see a larger surface to build on, of course, but that is more or less negligible when you consider that you can expand out to the same size and weight on the small rotor as you can with the advanced rotor. So it's really the only reason you want to use the advanced rotors if you need to convey cargo through it. Now I've got a couple of utility craft and a mock-up fighter design which is really a horrible overall design right now but it's not something I planned on making really that effective. It was more just a show of concept. So first here is this is uh, our multiple utility craft design as you can see, it's got two welders and two grinders. Now, it's got your normal conveyance system that we set up in the advanced rotors carry over to each arm. And what this allows us to do is to rotate out which items are forward. Now, this is a very basic craft design that I've been using for quite some time now. You toggle on and off. So we'll go in the first person here. As you can see, our welders are in play. We'll turn them on, and we'll move up to this framework here. Now, the only real problem I have with this is, well, two pro minor problems, really, is that the spacing is slightly off, so it's a bit difficult to see where you're hitting or to hit central. craft is just slightly bulky on the sides because of the arms, but it's still fairly streamlined. Of course, a fixed point craft would do much better for streamlining in space. Now, that advanced rotor system does pull all the parts through the cargo system there, so everything that you weld or grind off will move through the conveyor, into the advanced rotor, through the next conveyor, and then into the cargo hold and then when you dock, either offload or onload as needed. Now this other one here was actually something I came up with while I was building the other one for the video today. What we have here is the same general premise. It has two welders and two grinders. And instead of using advanced rotor, we're using small rotors. Now, you'll notice how it flips over, and the two items are centralized. They're actually a bit closer to the cockpit in regards to the width, the horizontal direction. So that makes it a bit easier to hit exactly where you're aiming, even with a raised cockpit. And of course, with the connectors, you'll hit P to park, it'll lock those connectors. So that connection is solid all the way through and it will not rotate around. Now, that there allows you to basically rotate these arms freely without having to make a centralized conveyance system, basically. Uh, if you were to do this with a large rotor, or rather advanced rotor in place of the small rotors, you'd have to put a uh, conveyor or cargo hold, a large medium cargo hold at least, on either end. Actually, it would have to be a large cargo hold or a conveyor and that would just bulk your utility arms further outward. Of course you could build it slightly further back, recessed in, to make up for that, but really you're just spending a lot more parts to do this same concept that we're 
regards. So, what we have here is we've got it locked. Now, with this, using minimal thrusters, we do have a bit of drag and drift because of the arms. And you do definitely have to consider the actual width of the arms. Now, uh, another alternative to this is to do uh, 90 degree arms instead of the 180 which means basically instead of having them as they are now you would take say the grinder section you'd cut it off and you would have it go up so that would give you a slight slightly smaller horizontal profile rather so here we are going into do a test weld as you can see they're a bit more forward but they're also more centralized It makes it easier to hit those hard to reach places. And of course the same would be true for the grinders. Now when you go to dock, of course you'd have to hit P to unlock your arms and then dock up and hit P again to lock everything together. In other words, you'd have the arms toggled off and the actual docking system on the back would be toggled off. Now again, of course, a fixed utility arm craft using just welders or grinders or one of each as the default ship does would be the smallest profile you can get and the most cost effective in parts for that particular role however when you want to either salvage or construct a large ship at a decent speed you're going to need at least two and of course, why waste resources on building a second ship when you consider that your only additional cost here on this design comes from the arm sections. And we could roughly say that uh, two thirds of the cost and parts are additional to make this a multi utility craft versus it being a two point fixed craft, as we had discussed, and similar to the. Or the original constructor design versus having to build the entire chassis and cargo system all over again for a second craft. Of course that does have its own risks as far as survival goes because if you lose it you lose not only your welder but your grinder and any parts that you had in it obviously but that really comes down to user control and environmental situations. Now on to the next one here. This is the fighter craft, which basically the idea behind this is that while you tend to have fixed points what for your weapons here where you cannot really cover those gaps, say you get too close or your enemy is too far away that you can't quite line it up while you're keeping pursuit. Sorry, dog is apparently howling at a siren. Alright, so you can't quite line it up, the enemy keeps falling in between the uh, dots for your fixed weaponry. What this allows is your weapons obviously are rotating around. And you can do a various configurations here. You can do centralized, or you can do like I have here where it's two spread points. And that allows you to maximize your chance of engaging the enemy fighters and small maneuverable craft or even key systems. So. As you can see, it's got a decent rotation speed, but not ridiculously fast. I have toggled it so that I can turn it on and off. Of course, I did not think that I would need to actually apply braking force. There we go. So while we're firing, you can see how they rotate around. So let's say it's fixed here, and we would have trouble hitting, uh, say, that centralized piece right there. So we just rotate it around, and it cuts through it very easily. It also makes it a bit harder for your enemy to knock off your weapons in combat. I, of course, you're going to have a better profile and a lot less resources used on fixed position weapon aircraft. But this does give it a little bit more, uh, or sorry, a bit more 
user friendliness, a little easier to use altogether. Now, we're going to take a look at these. Uh, the small and the advanced rotors both have their degrees marked on it. Zero, of course, is your default position, and as I'm assuming you know, there's a 360 degree radius all the way around. Now, what that means, of course, is orientation, where it's facing, and where it's stopping. So you have a lower limit and an upper limit. So let's say we put our lower limit here to zero, and our upper limit here to 180. Now that means it will only rotate between those two degrees, which means we don't have to tell it to turn off or on, we just have to tell it to reverse. Now velocity is the rotations per minute, the amount of time that it goes around one full circle on its face. This is at 8 rotations per minute. Uh, torque and braking force, uh, fairly self-explanatory, that is the amount of power that's put behind the turn and the amount of power that is put into stopping the turn. Rotor displacement, as you can see, allows you to move the rotor grid up or down to solve various alignment issues. So if you had a slanted block that is right flush up against that rotor that could cause some conflict with items on it, you can increase or decrease your rotor displacement and it will allow basically a little bit of wiggle room on that to keep it from just snapping off altogether or just stopping. Now. As you saw, the lower and upper limit, that determines where on the grid it stops. Now, you can go negative 360, which is unlimited, or you can go positive 360, which is also unlimited. So, let's put it to some random numbers here. Now, we'll go ahead and turn the block off. So we can change these random numbers again. You'll notice the message here when it is out of what you've set the limits to. It will rotate around. Uh, positive velocity is clockwise, negative velocity is counterclockwise. It will rotate around until it gets within those parameters and then it will lock at the furthest one. So if your upper limit is, well, 87 degrees and it's rotating at a positive velocity, which is clockwise, it's going to rotate until it hits that 87. Now say your lower limit was 63 at the same time, it would go past that 63 and stop at the 87 because that is the direction it's rotating in. If it were negative, it would do the reverse. It would pass over 87 and count down to 63 degrees. Alright, well that pretty much covers the basics of rotors and their various uses. I hope that video was informative, and as always, have a good day.